Getting started with childsafeguarding.com. Thank you for joining childsafeguarding.com. What I'm gonna do in this getting started video is just go over the basics of how to use the platform, how to get learners onto the system, and how to track learners. The system itself is pretty straightforward, but it's a little different than some of the e-learning platforms you've used in the past. The first thing I'm gonna need you to do is visit csawa.re. This is the client-facing side of childsafeguarding.com. It might be a little different than the URL that you use to register your account. So csawa.re, come down here and log into the dashboard. Now let me give you a bit of a tour of the dashboard so I can show you how to use the main functions of the platform. So first off, we're on the Seats and Languages page of the dashboard. And you'll see at the top information about your purchase seats, how many completed seats you have, and these will be the certificates that we've issued to you, how many in-progress learners you have, and then how many available seats you have to use. As a reminder, we sell seats on the system that you can use with any language. You have not paid for or will not be using seats with a particular language. We have no limitations there. You can use any language on the system you want. Now, let's go in and add a language or two just so we get a feel for how to choose the languages that you're gonna use with your learners. So what you'll do first here is click on the Add More Languages button on the Seats and Languages part of the dashboard. The first thing we do whenever you choose to add additional languages onto the account is we ask you to verify information about your organization, the contact person for your organization, and most importantly, your reporting information. Now remember, this is the child protection reporting information that will show up in the course and on the certificates that learners will be told to use in case they have a child protection concern to report at your school. So please make sure that this is accurate. And you can edit any of this information by just clicking the edit buttons. Next, we can go and choose our languages. Now from here, you can choose any language that we have currently available on the system. And as I have said before, we continue to add new languages. So later on, if there's a language that you need that's not on this list, but we add it on, you can come back and do this process again to choose one of those languages. I'm now gonna choose just two or three languages to show you how it works. So I'm gonna choose Arabic and English and Mandarin and Spanish. So I've chosen four languages and then I click Submit. You'll now see that the four languages that I have chosen are available on my dashboard. For every language that you choose, you'll be given a QR code and a URL. You'll use that QR code or URL to get learners onto the system. Now, we do not individualize the codes. We differentiate them by language. So what you'll do is you will give the same code to all of the Arabic speakers you'll give this code to all of the English speakers, all of the Mandarin speakers. So we differentiate by language, not by individual learner. Now to make this easier, you can actually click on the QR code to download a better looking version of the QR code that just makes it easier for you to distribute the QR code to your learners via messaging apps or email or to print them out. All you have to do is click on the QR code The code will download to your computer, and this is what it'll look like. And you'll see the name of the language is on this image itself. It's a little bit nicer formatted and easier to take pictures of, and the link to the URL is actually listed here. So this just becomes a very easy way to distribute these codes to your learners without having to have them use a smaller version of the QR code. Now at the bottom of the page, you'll see your transaction history. This is where all your purchases will be listed, receipts for those transactions, and every time you add new languages, those um, transactions will also be listed down here at the bottom. Now let's talk about getting learners started on the course. As I mentioned, what you'll do is you'll give them a code, and the code will correspond to the language you think they should use or they would prefer to use to take the course. I'm gonna start out with the Arabic version here. Okay, so this is the Arabic version. I'm just gonna copy the URL. Now I'm gonna open a new tab. 
I'm going to paste the URL and visit that page. And you'll notice that everything they see is in Arabic. So they'll get Arabic from beginning to end. Now, if you've given them a, a language that's not accurate, they can come in here and choose another language based on the ones that you've pre-selected. So if they choose, let's say Spanish, you'll see that everything changes to Spanish. To get onto the system, to actually start the course, they don't need an email address, they don't need a password, nothing like that. All they have to do is type in their name and press begin, okay? So nothing special, no special registrations, just type your name and press begin. And we'll type in my name and I'll press begin. Now you'll see that it has their name as they've entered it, the language that they've chosen, and then your school's name is here. So this personalizes the experience for your school. You'll also notice that all of the content, all of the labels and all of the text is in the language that they've chosen. Now up here in the upper left-hand corner, you'll notice there's a link. This is what we call a learner code. They can use this learner code to pause and resume the course. And let me demonstrate that now. So they'll start the course by pressing play. And then you'll notice the, the course will start up. And we're going to go through the first slide a este curso en línea de to the second slide. So it's going to finish the first slide. And now we're in the second slide. Okay. Introduction. So we have moved into the second slide. This is our current location. So let me pause the course. With this learner code, and it's either a QR code or a URL, the learners can pause and resume the course. So if they don't have 60 to 90 minutes to do this in one sitting, they can use this course to manage their own experience, to come back to it if they need to take a break. They can also use this code as tech support. So if they lose internet connection, if they, um, if they need to move to another device, whatever the reason may be, they can use this code to resume wherever they left off. So I'm just gonna copy this code and then I'm gonna close the window, okay? Now, if I open the window again and put that code in, and I can now just imagine we were doing this on another device or on a phone or, or somewhere else, you'll see that I bring the information back, right? It still says the same name, the same language, the same school. And as soon as I come, it loads up, you'll see that when we start the course again, we're gonna start exactly where we left off. So now it's loading into slide two, not to slide one. So they can use this. They can use this code to resume wherever they they pause or wherever they um, lose connection and maintain their um, maintain wherever they are within the course. You'll also notice that by doing this, you as an administrator are hands off. They will do all of this on their own, and you don't need to assist them in doing this pausing and resuming. The code allows them to do that. All right, now let's go back to the dashboard. As you can see, I've added all of the other languages available at the time of this recording. So I have a QR code and URL for every language on the system that I could use, all right? Now let's talk about tracking the learner. So what I'm gonna do here is go up to the learner section and click learners. In the learner section of the dashboard, you'll be able to monitor and manage all of the learners taking the course connected to your school. So that one that we just did is listed right here. So this person is connected and employed by your school or maybe is a volunteer at your school. This one right here works for the bus and transport company. The bus and transport company is one of your vendors. So they've connected to you through the system and they've paid for this particular seat. But since they've connected to you on the system, you're able to see it here on the learner dashboard. Now in the learner dashboard, you can also see how much time a learner has spent in the course, the language that they've used, and where they are in the course, whether they've completed it or whether they're currently in progress. Now, in terms of the names that people can put into the system, they don't need an English name. They can put in any language they want as evidenced here. So they can put whatever name they want and the system will take it. Some companies ask learners to not only put their name, but to put some sort of identifier, like a, an employee code. That's what's happened here. Now, when they complete the course, they do not need to give you their certificate. You'll have access to the certificate here. If I click on this, it's going to open up a new window. Now you'll see from the certificate page that this learner completed the course in Korean. So everything is in Korean. 
I can download the certificate, I can print it, or I can email it to myself and it will email a Korean version of the certificate. Now, the certificate has the person's name, it has your school's information, it has the um, completion date and the validity date. So this is when it will expire. And then your reporting information is listed right here on the certificate. Notice all that information is in green. Okay. Now, one of the things that you can do is if you need the certificate in another language, maybe to show to a board or to some outside accrediting agency, you can change the language of the certificate right here. So this learner did the course in Korean, but we may want an English version of the certificate. So I can click on it, go, go up to English, and you'll notice that I now have access to the certificate in English, and all of that green information has stayed exactly the same. So you can print out the certificate in any language you want. In two years time, when the certificate expires, this will change from completed to expired. You'll still have access to it, but it will say expired. Now we are working with human beings and in the course we tell these human beings to keep a copy of their learner code. But some of them will forget to do that. So here you can get a copy of the learner code that you can share with them if they need to re-access the course and resume wherever they left off. You can only do this with people that are working in your organization. Now, if you have somebody that has gotten partway through the course but isn't going to complete it, you can terminate their session and take that seat back. Now, you'll notice that I have two in-progress sessions for people working in my organization. Let's go back to the seats and languages really briefly just so you can see that. So I have 292 seats available, seven people have completed the course, and I have two currently in progress. I'm going to terminate one of these so that I can make that seat available for someone else to use. So let's go back to learners and I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to click the, the checkbox right next to the learner's name. And then you'll see up here that it says terminate in progress sessions. When I click terminate, it will terminate that session. And now the code is no longer available and it now says terminated. If I go back to the seats and languages, you'll now see I only have one seat currently in progress but I now have 293 available. So you can take those in progress sessions and terminate them and make those sessions then available or those seats available for other learners to use because the seats that you have purchased from us only get used up when somebody receives a completed certificate. If they don't have a certificate, you can allocate that seat to somebody else. Now let me show you one more thing on the learner section and you'll see this thing that says timed out. So we have a rule inside of our system that a learner has only two weeks to complete the course. So if they start the course, they need to finish it within a two week time period. This is because after two weeks, the instruction will not be retained very well if it's done piecemeal beyond the two weeks. After those two weeks, sessions will automatically be timed out. When a session is timed out, it's just as if you had manually terminated it. So the, the session will be, um, will be terminated and the seat will be made available back in the seats and languages for someone else to use. It's just a way for us to automate to make sure that people are completing the course in a reasonable amount of time and ensuring that people are getting completed certificates um, based on the number of seats that you paid. Let's talk about how to update information on your account. So I'm going to click on the Manage Account button here on the top. And you'll see you have the option to edit any of the information about your account, your organization, the contact person, or most importantly, your reporting information. Remember, this reporting information is child protection reporting information that will be used by learners on the course to report child protection concerns at your school. And as such, it should be kept up to date. This information shows up in the course itself and on the completion certificate. We recommend that you update it every time you have a change of designated safeguarding lead or a new phone number or whatever that is. When you make a change to it, the change will show up immediately in every course that is taken from that point forward and every certificate that is issued from that point forward. So I'll show you. Right now it says Malcolm Lee Child Safeguarding Lead. In the certificate, it says Malcolm Lee Child Safeguarding Lead. If I come in here and change the name, let's say Joe Biden, okay, 
and he's still the child safeguarding lead. So he's now taken over for our school. And I click update. You'll see now that the information is updated here. It says Joe Biden. But if I go into the certificate, as soon as I refresh the certificate, okay, it now says Joe Biden. So the information will update immediately. Again, we recommend that you keep that information as up to date as possible because that's gonna be the reporting information that your learners are going to use to make child protection reports at your school. The last thing you need to know is that we have a full set of how-to videos that are available on YouTube that will show you how to use various features on the course, from updating information to verifying certificates to purchasing additional seats. And again, if you have any questions or need any advice or help, please send us an email at info at childsafeguarding.com and we'll be happy to take you through some of the individual details or answer some of your questions about using the system. And once again, thank you for joining childsafeguarding.com. We appreciate your help in making child protection more available to schools worldwide.